I'm Nicole Pasciutto, and today we're visiting a museum that's an amazing exhibit in its own right. The California Academy of Sciences is the largest public LEED certified building in the world, as well as the world's greenest museum. So, in a real San Francisco treat, we're getting a behind the scenes look at the Academy to get an inside view on exactly how it's built green. After completing a $488 million reconstruction and renovation project, the Academy reopened in Golden Gate Park, San Francisco in September of 2008. Utilizing the latest technologies, the museum has developed a guest experience with a central theme of life and its sustainability. We not only try and get people excited about science and teach them about science, but we also want to teach them about the importance of the natural world and the connection between the health of the natural world and the health of humanity. So we're trying to establish that connection there and we try and operate in a sustainable manner here, as, be as green as possible here. And we also try and use that example that we set to help inspire and empower other individuals and other organizations to act in a similar manner. Topped by a two and a half acre living roof that absorbs about 98% of the rainwater, the roof will prevent up to 3.6 million gallons of runoff from carrying pollutants into the ecosystem each year. The Academy sits under a living roof, which contains over 1.7 million plants and provides insulation and natural cooling for the building. This living roof system absorbs 98% of the water that falls from the sky. What that does is it prevents it from turning into polluted runoff, running down into the city, picking up all the gunk that's in the city streets and then flowing out into the bay or into the water system. So what we do here is we capture most of the water that comes from the sky and prevent it from turning into polluted runoff. This is the Rainforest Dome, okay. and behind us there is the Planetarium Dome. You'll see there's two equal-sized domes on the roof. Um, these domes are actually a really important part of the passive cooling system for the building as well. Cold air sweeps across the roof, and actually it goes across these domes on the, on the hills here and channels down into the piazza, which is right behind us. And although the piazza looks like it's closed from the outside elements, there's actually a perimeter gap all the way around it. It was designed purposely to be an outdoor space. So the cold air sinks into the piazza because cold air sinks, uh -huh. and then we have windows at the base of the piazza, which we can open up. That sucks out the cold air into the building's interior spaces and provides passive air conditioning. Wow. And then the hot air rises and is vented out through these skylights here in the dome. So we have this circulating cooling effect which saves us a ton of energy and a ton of money. The Academy of Sciences was built with water conservation in mind. And we have makeup water coming from the beach for our aquarium system so that we don't have to use domestic water. At Kohler, water conservation is a critical issue and we're really focused on creating education and awareness to consumers about the benefits of saving water and how they can do that. The most important and effective way that we minimize potable water use is that we actually have a pipe that goes three and a half miles underground from this aquarium here out to the Pacific Ocean. And so what we do is we draw in salt water from the Pacific Ocean into the aquarium here and we treat it so that the salt water becomes a little more specific for the different types of tanks in the aquarium. What I've learned is that when we can connect with people in a meaningful way and help them understand that there are things they can do to help, they're really, really interested in and willing to try. And so I feel like there's a very strong story of hope here at the Academy and my experience has been that people, although not always easily shifted into change, are really, really interested in finding out how they can help. And so we try and make that connection, try and help them provide them with solutions they can use in their own homes. What I've seen around the United States in particular is that consumers are now becoming aware of water efficiency as, a, as an opportunity to save water in their homes. I think what we've really looked at is getting them a real understanding of how much they can save. And once they see that, they get excited about it. 